And I'm amazed that he knows my name. <laughs> that out of all of the names, he knows mine. And that he extended love to me while I was a sinner. That is amazing. That is amazing. Just high five three people say, that's amazing. You know you, that's amazing. You know you, that's amazing. Everybody say, say, oh. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Just touch somebody and say, he knows my name. That's so amazing. That's so amazing. Because I be tripping, but he don't forget me. I cop an attitude, but he still remembers. How many of y'all know you done left church, came back, left, came back, left, came back, and he was right there every time you came back? So amazing. Oh, amazing. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. There is a word in this house. Finally, finally, after all the hell you've been through, finally, after almost giving up, you, fit, you got to the finish line. Everybody say finally. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong. Feeling what you feel right now. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. So that word finally means that you've been through like. I wish I could just call the sermon finally. Finally, when I get to the end of all I've been through. I have been through enough now to be declared strong. The less you go through, the weaker you are. Lay aside every... You, you got to have trouble to get strength. And there is a blessing that God has for you, but the devil wants you so focused on your fight that you can't see your future. You're busy fighting a past battle with a bright future in front of you. The devil has you fighting a battle that's over with. Litigating a case that's been settled. And, and you can't move forward. But let me tell you why I love God. It's because he is above all. He sees all. And he knows all. Omnipresent. Omniscient. He knows it all. He sees it all. Omnipotent. He knows it all. Right? Omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. So while you're fighting the battle, I love that God is still making sure that everything is working out for our good. I want to talk on this subject today, Ephraim. I want, I want to talk about backed up blessings. I want to talk about backed up blessings. Give three people a high five and say, backed up blessings. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. With a high degree of assurance, resisting the idea of probability, I am secure with my analysis 
in suggesting that a majority of the individuals in this house are familiar with Ephesians chapter 6 even if you didn't know that it was Ephesians chapter 6. Most people, as it relates to biblical exegesis and ideology, are familiar with passages even though we cannot specifically denote where those passages are. Most people will know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, but are not probably astute enough to tell you exactly where that address is. I am suggesting that because I believe that all of you have a theological understanding of Ephesians chapter 6, even though you may not know that what you know is found in the sixth chapter of Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. You know this chapter. We don't have to spend the next 40 minutes trying to bring you up to speed as to what this text is talking about because you know it top to bottom. You are very smart. You are astute. You have studied this. And perhaps if you are normal, you have used it as ammunition to prove a point. Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus on 6th Street first house. He lets us know that children ought to obey their parents, <clears throat> for this is right, and that it is, the first, it is the first commandment with the promise. And it lets us know that children ought to honor their mothers and their fathers. You see how y'all saying amen already, that their days might be long, and every good parent has used this as a way to scare your children straight. Every good parent is telling them, you, you, you ain't going to live long if you disrespect me. But the children have gotten smarter and said, yeah, mama, the first three verses belong to you. But by the time we get to verse four, it's my turn. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. That word provoke, where we get the Latin word provocateur. It, it's, it's a compound word, provoke, pro, forward, pro Voke, where we get our word voco. In other words, you have to make sure that you are saying the right things to your children because whatever you pronounce, you provoke. How you speak to your children will determine where your children end up. You can't call them stupid and expect them to act smart. You can't call them an idiot and expect them to act like a genius. Fathers, don't allow your anger to allow you to say something in anger that you do not mean in expression. This chapter has even been used in the darkest stain of our American history. That in antiquity, hundreds of years ago, when slavery was legal in our United States, slave owners would use verse 5 as a way to keep their property in check. Where verse 5 says, slaves obey your masters. It is a misusage and a malpractice of a text that has kingdom uh, uh, connotations that was used for humanistic apprehension. Whether you look at it from that perspective or not, all of you all know exactly what I'm saying. And then we skip over the verse 11 and we go down and you know all of that too because the Bible says that we ought to put on the whole armor of God that we should have the helmet of salvation and the shoes of the gospel and the breastplate of righteousness and the sword of the word of God. You know this chapter. Nobody has to indoctrinate you. You know this chapter. I don't have to teach it to you. You know this chapter. But the problem is, is that you knew the chapter, but you missed the power. You knew that children were to obey their parents and fathers should not provoke their children. And you knew that slaves and masters was a kingdom mindset and not a humanistic mindset. And you knew that the full armor of God was at your disposal. But somehow we've gone to chapter 6 from verse 1 through 9, skipped to verse 11 and went down to the end, missing chapter 10, which is in the middle, which holds it all together. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong. Don't get strong. Don't fix them to be strong. Don't be praying on your strength. Don't be working to get strong. Somebody say, be strong. Be strong. 
that, that's, that's, watch this, it's not a suggestion, it is a perlative. And in other words, God says, be strong, but, but, but I'm broke, be strong. I just lost my job, be strong. I just lost my relationship, be strong. Somebody I love just died, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. I know what you're going through, but I'm not giving you an excuse. I've got something to tell you, be strong. Somebody say, be strong. Don't be trying to get strong, be strong. No matter what you're going through, be strong. Do I have any strong people in here today? I know you're strong because if you were not strong, you would not be here this morning because the devil has done everything that he could to keep you from getting here. Somebody say, I'm here today, not because I'm holy, but because I'm strong. I'm not here today because I wanted to hear a sermon. I'm here because something pushed me and told me, don't stay home. Because if I had my way, I would have stayed at home. I didn't feel like getting up. My boss get on my nerve. My marriage is falling apart. My children have lost their mind. I don't have enough money to meet all of my obligations. But I'm strong. Do I have any strong people? I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm strong. I didn't feel like coming, but I'm strong. I felt like giving up, but I'm strong. I felt like when I got through that divorce, I wasn't going to be able to make it, but I'm here today. But do I have any strong people? Matter of fact, slap somebody who looks strong and say, this is what strength feels like. This is what strength feels like. And as a matter of fact, I came to let you know if you got a high five, you just touched a survivor. You just touched a survivor. I promise you, you are sitting next to somebody who's been through hell, high water, depression, insecurity. They have been broke more days than they can count been alone more days than they care to admit, but they made it through because they're strong. Not because they had friends, because they lost them. When my mothers and my fathers and my friends have forsaken me, you know what I had? I had my strength. Do I have anybody say, I got strength, I got strength. I got you got to be strong to say, somebody, to say sorry to somebody who's going to do the same thing tomorrow. You got to be strong to work with people you know ain't worth a dime. You got to be strong to go to the family reunion knowing they've been talking about you and hug them anyway. You ain't got to say, man, I'll say it for you. You got to be strong to come in church and no folk been talking about you and still hug them and sit next to them. You got to be strong. You don't get nothing else out of this. Be strong. Quit crying so much. Quit whining all the time. Be strong. I'm just waiting on the Lord. Quit waiting on him. He ain't no, he ain't where he going. He already everywhere at the same time. You ain't waiting on nobody who don't move. Be strong. I can't go back to the church. I don't like the way they set me. Shut up. Be strong. That parking lot, it the line too long. Be strong. You wait at Reliant, you can wait at the church. Be strong. When you go to the mall, it ain't no parking spot at Dillard's because you ain't going to pay. So you're driving around trying to find a free spot and you just drive around until somebody move at Walmart so you can get two spaces closer. Shut up. Be strong. You know when you go to Walmart, they're going to have three lines open to seven million people. Just stand there and listen to an audible and be strong. Be strong. I've never seen so many weak believers. The access, access to all this power... And we cry about everything. We're depressed about everything. We quit after every incident. Every time somebody hurt our feelings, we're gone. Be strong in the Lord. That's why you had to grow up the way you grew up, because you had to get some strength. You learn some stuff in the hood you don't learn in the burbs. Holla at your boy. And let me tell y'all, for everybody who grew up in the hood, stop thinking that people who had, it, had resources growing up didn't have it rough. Oh, you, you're missing what I'm saying. Because some of these people, mamas and daddies, had monies, but they didn't have their mom and daddy. And while you're running around here talking about, if I had some money growing up, I'd be further along. And they're saying, I had money, but if my daddy would have been there to see me off to school in the morning and my mother had to come to one cheerleading practice, I'd be better off. No matter what situation you're in, you got to be strong. Either be strong or quit, but quit complaining and staying in it. Somebody say be strong. But, but where do you have to be strong? You got to be strong in the Lord. You can't be strong in your opinion. You got to be strong in the Lord. You can't be strong in your emotions. You got to be strong in the Lord. You can't be strong in what you heard. You got to be strong in who? In the Lord. It is in him that we live. It is in him that we move. 
and it is in him that we have our being. Somebody say, be strong, be strong. That word strong, enduomno, it's a word that, that in the Greek that suggests that, 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 that we have to be strong, but it's a different kind of strong, enduomno. It's a compound word, in, obviously, E-N, where we get our English word, I-N, in, watch this, uh, enduomno, where we get our Greek word, dunamis, where we get our English word, dynamite, which means explosive power. So what God is saying is, I have put in you, See, J.J. was right when he said dynamite. He said, I have put in you explosive power. I have put in you enduomno. I've put in, we have this treasure in this earthen vessel. There is nothing that you can do that I have not already put the power in you to do. Are, are you hitting, you, you see what I'm saying? So, so, so here it is. He said, I put enduomno in you. I put power in you. But here is the problem. It, do you all see this wire on this stage? I can pick it up and grab it right now. You know why? Because it's not broken. If it was broken and I went down to touch it, there's a quite, it's quite possible that I would be shocked. You know why? Because anything, any vessel that has power going through it and that is broken is dangerous. Ah, help me. Any, all right, how many of you ever, uh, you know, the phone charger and, and it starts cracking at the edge? Have you ever touched it and got a shock? Because it is a dangerous thing to touch something that's designed to transfer power, but it's too broken to harness it. Don't miss this. God says, I want to send more power through you, but you are so broken that if I gave you more power, you would hurt everybody that touched you. God, help me. I want to put wine in you, but you are so cracked that you would cut anybody who drunk from you. So I got to hold back the power until you get healed. God, help me in this, help me in this place. Do I, I, I just need every broken person to identify themselves. It, it, that's why God says, you are smart enough to be the supervisor, but you're not healed enough. You fine enough to get a husband, but you too broken. Your butt big, but your mind crazy. So I can't send you what you've been praying for because I'll send you a good man and you'll mess him up because, oh God, you, you ain't got to say man. You fine, but you crazy. And the same thing for you, brother. I would send you a good thing, but you're so manipulative and power hungry that you will suppress a good woman because you are broken. It's dangerous to send power through a broken vessel. I put enduomno in you, but you won't heal. I put enduomno in you, but you won't let it go. I want to put enduomno in you, but you hold grudges too long. I want to put enduomno in you, but you can't get over somebody looking at you funny. I want to put enduomno in you, but if somebody cuts you off in traffic, you will crash your car to prove a point. So I've held the power because you won't handle the pain. I can't send you a husband yet because the moment he does what your ex did, you're going to remind, you're going to remind him of somebody he never met. I want to give it to you, but I can't send power through broken lines. Into omno, I infuse power. Any cooks in here? Anybody cook? God bless you. I don't. So listen. But I love people who can cook. Now, I ain't talking about no fixers. I'm talking about cookers. Now, this is for, we done been through this before. I ain't talking about people who got dishes that you warm up and all that. I'm talking about cookers now. Okay, y'all hear me? Okay, y'all hear me? I'm talking about cookers. I'm talking about C-O-O-K-A's. I'm talking about people who start on Thursday. For some, you're going to eat on Monday. Well, yeah, no, not Uncle Ben's. 
I ain't talking about putting no bag and no little pressure thing and pushing a button, coming back to I made rice. No, rice made itself. You didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. So I'm asking again, any, any cookers in the house? You know about infusing meat. You know about, now, I'm going to sound crazy. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who know how to put that brush in the stuff and, you know. What's it called? Basin. And I'm talking about the ones with the threads, not that little new rubber one y'all been using. Don't use that. That don't hold nothing. I'm talking about people who know how to make a ham and put them little black things on it, you know. What, who? Yeah, and pineapples and, and red stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, cherry juice or whatever it is y'all put on it. I, I, <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, but I know how to know when you're doing it. So when somebody know how to cook, they take Jiffy and make it taste homemade. You know, they'll take Jiffy, but like, no, I don't, that ain't, I don't make my cornbread like that. I put honey in it, and then I put a couple of cracked eggs in it, and I mix some milk in it. Come on, Yahoo. Talking about people who can cook. Black eyed peas and lima beans. Roast with banana peppers and talking about the people who can take regular old green beans and put bacon and potatoes in it. By the time you finish with them green beans, y'all know. Don't y'all mess with me. Make a cheeseburger, you gotta inject it with some jalapenos and some. Cause see that word, that word here, in duomno means injected power. Means that the power was infused into the vessel. So anybody ever drink infused water? Or you put, only a few of us. I know you infuse other water-based beverages, but I'm saying, <laughs> I mean, only five people raise their hand. Like, how many of y'all put fruit in liquid Okay, all right, church, come on, come on, come on, come on. You know what I'm talking about. Come on, come on now. We on TV now. Y'all make y'all y'all telling your business if you just say man on the first one. You know, you're talking, put these pineapples in, in that in that clear water and four days later, your spirit changed when you eat fruit, you understand what I mean? Because it's infused. If you infuse it, now I heard, I don't know this, Del Frisco's has this pineapple drink over down there at the Galleria. I've heard about it. They leave pineapples in this container for two weeks. And um, that's all I'm going to say about that. But what I want you to know, I got to get back to the sermon. What I want you to know is the point that I'm making is that it takes a while for the fruit to be infused by whatever liquid they use. See, that's why God leaves you in things, because you won't soak it in. So he leaves you in the trouble long enough until you learn to gain enough strength. This is about strength. This is not about struggle. Help me, Holy Ghost. This is about strength. And God says, you are not going to get out of it any sooner than you recognize the fact that I left you in it long enough so that you can get enough strength to handle whatever it is that you are in or whatever it is that is in you. He who has began a good work in you shall establish it until the day of Jesus Christ. That means that you are not going to get out of it any sooner than you learn the purpose for it and that you gain the strength from it. Crying is not going to end it. Being frustrated is not going to end it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Where are the strong people who will say, God, it was good that I was afflicted, that I might gain enough strength to handle this and still build my business that I can handle this and still be a good husband and wife, that I can handle this and still raise my children. Where are the people who say, God, you can trust me because I got enough strength to handle my problems and my progress? Oh, God, help me in this place. 
I'm not talking about people who always need a break when they're struggling and got to take a week off because they're hurting. I'm talking to people right now to tell you if you got enough stability to be hurt and still heal, to go through struggle and still progress, God told me to tell you to get ready because you are next in line for a miracle because the blessing is coming to people who can use both hands. I don't know who I'm talking to. Touch somebody and say, I can use both hands. I can praise him with one hand, and I can build the wall with the other. Come here, Nehemiah. I don't have to come off the wall to fight. I can fight you and build my business. I can pray the devil off me and love my children. Do I have any ambidextrous people in the house that says you can attack me, and I can still advance? Who am I talking to in this place? I ain't got to quit because I'm hurt. I'm going to learn to do it while I'm struggling. Who am I talking to in this place? I ain't got to have nobody to make it. If you leave me, leave me, but I ain't going to stop my dream. My dream wasn't connected to you. My dream wasn't connected to this relationship. I wanted it to work, but I found out that my next season didn't have an access pass for you. So I'm not going to stay in the past so that we can work. I'm going to go into the future and see what tomorrow got for me. Somebody shout, be strong. be strong. Say it again, be strong. be strong. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. In do I'm no. In do I'm no. You got to have, you got you to be strong. You got to be, be strong. God literally deposited enough power in you to be strong enough to handle what you're going through. Even though you don't feel like it, you're strong enough. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 10, verse 13, I will never put more on you. You are strong enough, you just won't use your strength. You can't be a victim your whole life. You just can't. Somewhere along the line, you got to have a testimony and say, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. I used to have a temper, but now it don't come as fast. I used to get an attitude for everything, but I'm over there. Where is your ex story? Everybody shout, M do I'm no. Even if you said it wrong, God knows what you're talking about. You just spoke Greek, by the way, so you can tell people I speak Greek, Spanish, and English. M do I'm no. He's you you gotta you gotta you gotta be able to to harness the power. If you go back in antiquity, you would find out that one of the Greek mythological creatures named Hercules, this was the first time that we seen the word Enduamnu used out of the scripture to talk about uh, uh, an individual uh, uh, about strength. Hercules was, 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 watch this, he was a, he was a Greek mythological uh, a substance, but he was the son of the Greek god Zeus. And Zeus, being a Greek god, had the multiplicity of wives, and one of his wives was jealous of Hercules because he was able to have a son by his other wife. And what she did is she put two snakes in his crib. And she was hoping that when she got there in the morning that Hercules would be dead. But the, the, the Greek mythology lets us know that when they got up in the morning to go check Hercules' crib, he had choked a snake in both hands. She put two snakes in, and that's how we found out that he was strong and that he had more strength because the average man in a triathlon could, could lift 25 tons, but, but Hercules could lift 100 tons. And, and he choked two snakes with his hands. Watch this. They put it in his crib, and he choked it. You, you're missing this. See, the devil, the devil knows what you're going to be, so he's planted certain things in your crib. He's put certain spirits in your house. He's put certain things in your family, and he's put these snakes in. And see, if Eve had to choke the snake instead of talking to it. See, the problem is you keep speaking to it instead of strangling it. God, help me. I wish I had about five Hercules, Hercules in here today that would say, I'm going to strangle every attack of the enemy. I'm going to choke everything in my crib. Every depression snake, I'm going to choke it. Every insecurity snake, I'm, where are the people who are going to choke everything that came in your crib to kill you? Somebody shout, not in my crib. Not in my house, not in my kitchen, not in my bedroom, not in my living room, not in my family room. I'm going to take authority over my atmosphere. Where are the people who are going to strangle your snake instead of speaking to you? Every time a snake comes in your crib and you bow down and say, what do you want? 
you risk losing your garden. Because snakes don't speak fairly. And I know why some of y'all ain't strong. Because you have snakes in your crib. I know why some of you are not strong because you married snakes. You dated snakes. You had little baby snakes. Y'all ain't going to say man up in here. I know you can't say man, but you can say ouch. You got little baby snakes everywhere, and you're trying to figure out how to deal with the baby snake when they remind you of the papa snake. You got all kind of things going on, but I came to tell you right now that this is the season for you to strangle every snake that came up on you. And if you don't have the power to strangle the snake, Luke told me to tell you in chapter 10, verse 19, if your hands ain't strong enough, you have the power to tread on the serpent's head. I wish I had 500 people that'll stand up as a symbolism that I'm stepping on every snake that came in my house. I'm stepping on every snake that's trying to eat up my money. I'm stepping on every snake that came after my confidence. Let the redeemed of the Lord shout in this place. <laughs> Slap somebody and say, get rid of the snakes. Be strong in the Lord. Can I prophesy to you? I said, can I prophesy to you? This is what the word of the Lord, this is what the Lord told me to tell you. This is your last week being weak. I kind of like what y'all doing over here, but I'm going to find out what they're doing in the middle. I said, this is your last week. Y'all doing a little better. Let me see what's going on over here. I said, this is your last week. Being weak. Slap somebody and say, I'm about to get my swag back. I'm about to get my confidence back. I'm about to get my strength on. Somebody shout it out. The joy of the Lord ain't money. The joy of the Lord ain't a house. The joy of the Lord ain't a, the joy of the Lord is my. Be strong. Somebody say, be strong. be strong. When you get to work tomorrow, they're going to be the same as they were last Monday. Be strong. I don't got enough money to pay my bills. Be strong while you're broke. The doctor said I'm sick. Be strong while you're sick. In New Amno. Be strong. In the Lord. You better start strangling them snakes instead of speaking to them. In order for you to speak to a snake, you got to come down real low. And you be careful because some of them snakes can spit in your eyes. Have you heard about this story about the lady who had a seven foot snake? The lady had a seven foot snake and the snake was her pet. And she kept taking the snake to the vet. It's a real story. She kept taking the snake to the vet Talking about the snake who wouldn't eat. And no matter what she did to try to feed the snake, the snake wouldn't eat. The vet knowing snake said, by chance, have you been sleeping in the bed with the snake? The woman said, yes, because I felt so sorry for it that I was sleeping in the bed. She said, oh, I can tell you why he hasn't been eating. The snake has decided that it was going to eat you. And the reason why it hasn't ate is over the last week, it has been stretching itself. And it has been filling you with this tongue to figure out how big it's got to be to eat you. What I'm trying to, oh God. See, the snakes in your life, they'll lay in the bed with you. The snakes in your life, they'll ride in the car with you. The snakes in your life will go on a cruise with you. But all they're doing is sizing you up for their next meal. Slap your neighbor and say, I'm getting rid of the snakes. Get the snakes out of your garden, Eve, so that they don't mess up Cain, Abel, and Adam. Somebody shout him to him, no. Be in the Omno in the Lord and in the Kratos. 
Be strong in the Lord and in the power. Be in Duomno and in the Kratos. But this is a different power. This is a different power because Kratos is power that has to always be associated with manifestation. Okay, you're missing it. Because you can have Enduamno, but the snake can still get you. But if you ever get Kratos, if you ever get that kind of strength, the word of the Lord, I guarantee it, you will always have a testimony. Mm -mm, you missed what I said. No, 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 you missed it. When you switch from Enduamno to Kratos, my personal guarantee to you is that whatever you put your hands to will succeed. It has to be connected to manifestation, routinely, not coincidentally, every time. That means you're getting ready to walk into a place in your life that every prayer, I don't know who that's for. Will, I'm calling us into a season. Watch this. And I've been the Lord been dealing with me on this. The Lord told me to tell you that, that, that the year of expansion is expanding. I think it got to go another year because God says I'm still expanding. I'm still expanding so I can make room for you. I'm sizing you up to see how big I have to make the opportunity in order for it to fit you. Help me, Holy Ghost. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but over the next 18 months, God told me to tell you to get ready for all your prayers to be answered. Somebody shout all of them, not some of them. If you declare you're healed, you're going to get off the medicine. If you declare that you're married, your good thing is going to find you. If you declare that you're rich, money is going to find you. Somebody shout everything I want is mine. I'll give you houses you did not build. I'll give you vineyards that you did not plant. Somebody shout his mind. I said somebody shout his mind. Matter of fact, turn around and high five somebody else because you've been talking to the same person all day and tell them it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Now don't miss this. Because what I'm about to say right now, some of y'all might run up out of here. I'm telling you right now, what I'm getting ready to tell you right now, you, I, oh Lord, I shouldn't even tell you because it's too much power. It's too much power. I, if I tell you, you might, you see, because power in the wrong hand is a curse. So if I tell you this, you got to, you got to use it. How many of y'all going to use it? Ask your neighbor they're going to use it because I ain't got time to play with y'all. Uh, uh, can y'all do me a favor back there on team? Put Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 up. Now I'm about to give you, I'm about to give you the, I'm about to give you the juice. I'm, I'm about to give you that one one. I'm about to give you the sauce. Now, don't miss up. Don't y'all play with this. This is my secret. Okay. This is what Paul said. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us work, who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Go to the next verse. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Now go back to 19 because they missed it, okay? And what is the exceeding greatness of his kratos? All right, go to verse 20. Go to the next verse. Kratos, which he wrought his, in Christ when he raised him from the dead. In other words, what Paul is saying is that Kratos is the power that God used to get Jesus out of the grave. Now, be strong in the Lord and in the power, which means, in Duomno, in the Kratos, which means that you have resurrection power The same power that got Jesus out of the grave is in you. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I declare that you got enough power to get over and out of everything you in. Somebody shout, today is Easter. Today is Easter. I'm about to have a resurrection. I'm getting out of debt. I'm getting out of depression. I'm getting out of my grave. I'm getting out of my feelings. Somebody shout, get out. Somebody say, get out. Now, now how many of y'all ever seen the movie, Get Out? What did they do to get him out? 
Y'all ain't getting it. Every time they want somebody. See, the Bible says when we clap our hands, we summon angels. See, what you're going to need, you can't do it by yourself. You're going to need some angels. So I dare you to clap like the devil's head is in between your hands. And begin to clap and let the devil know you should have killed me when you had the chance. Somebody shout, I got the power. Y'all don't believe it. Because you don't know what kind of power you got. I'm talking about the kind of power that can go to the bank with a 500 credit score and sit down and ask for a loan. And they're supposed to say no, but because you got Kratos. Oh, hallelujah. I'm talking about somebody who want to go back to school but don't have the money. And you're waiting on them to, to accept your application. The next time you fill it out, just shit, Kratos, Kratos, Kratos. I got resurrection power, which means that whatever you speak to got to get up. Be strong, be in Duomno in the Lord and in the Kratos of his Iskos. Be in Duomno in the Lord and in the Kratos of his Iskos. Iskos, that's might. Now, now I'm about to give you the game. Because in Duomno, sometimes dynamite don't go off. Have you ever seen those buildings? They will put dynamite in it, they'll blow it, but the building don't come down because it's not 100%. So when we go from Induamno, we go to Kratos, which is a power that has to have manifestation. Now, you gotta ask yourself, how can I have a power that is 100% reliable and I'm human? How can I have a life where all of my prayers are answered and 100% of my endeavors fall in my favor? How is that possible? It's not the Kratos, it's the Iskos. It's the might that's behind the power. Now, why did I call this sermon backup power? I'm not talking about backed up like a clog. I'm talking about that God, like the cloud, has all of your blessings backed up. Okay, y'all not getting it. You're not getting it. Okay, how many of y'all remember when we used to buy iPhone 3s and 4s? Remember, we used to spend money because we had to have a 16 gig, and then we found out that we needed a 32, and then we needed, what, a 64, then we needed a 132, and then we needed a 2, we, need, we tried to, and they just kept getting bigger. Now, when you go get an iPhone, you just get a regular phone with decent gigs. Why? Because you don't need everything on the phone they have another system called the cloud. And whatever you don't want on the phone. And if you, if, if, if you know what I'm talking about, you know that when you set your phone to automatically back up, anytime you're connected to Wi-Fi. So if you lose the phone, okay, it ain't a tragedy because I don't lose my pictures. I don't lose my contacts because they are. I want to talk to everybody who has ever been broken. Anybody who has ever been lost. God told me to tell you that you're not going to lose your blessing because he backed up. How do I know? Because might is cost is the power that works behind the Kratos. God says, I will back you up. Anything you decide to do, I will put my might behind your power. I will put my iskos behind your Kratos. And even though you're lost or broken or confused, when I push you forward. Oh God, help me in this place. See, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of stronghold. What I'm trying to tell you is that there is a force trying to push you back to make sure that you never advance. But God says, no weapon. I got this. Just If you keep pressing toward the mark, I'll keep pushing you toward the prize. I got your back. God, what is it that's back there? Goodness and mercy. And every time you get weak, I'll send you an Aaron and an Ur to lift up your arms to make sure 
that when your arms get tired, mm -hmm. goodness and mercy will be there. Not from nine to five. It don't take the weekends off. David said, goodness and mercy shall follow you. That's why you're never going to lose because when you're broken and when you're confused and when you're angry, God says, I'm sending Iskos. I'm putting my might behind your strength. I'm backing up my promise. The only thing you have to do is stay connected. I know sometimes, you know, when you drive through Wi-Fi zones, I get tired of that little screen popping up trying to make me accept one. So sometimes I disconnect from Wi-Fi. But then I forget to turn it back on. And then I'm wondering why I'm in the house and it's going slow. It's because I let what happened to me somewhere else. I let what I was tired of somewhere else cause me to disconnect. And it's not until it starts being slow that you recognize that you are operating off a bad connection. Be in Duomno, in the Lord, and in the kratos of his ishkos. I got your back, man. Like, I got you. God is saying, I got you. When my mother and father have forsaken me, I got you. When your friends turn their backs on you, I, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I got your blessings back up just in case your screen cracks. I got your blessings backed up just in case your battery dies. I got your blessings backed up just in case you leave your phone in the back of an Uber. Don't worry about it because the next time you see me, I'm going to give you a new device and I'm going to download everything that I have backed up because it's got your name on it. They're your contacts. They're your pictures. They're your notes. They're your blessings. Don't be afraid, man. Ma'am, don't be afraid. Just be strong. Don't be angry, be strong. Don't get even, get strong. Are you hearing me? You ain't got to put nobody business in the street, just be strong. Worst thing you could do is to get even. You know why? Because you're so far ahead of the people you're getting even with, you got to go backwards to do it. You, you are strong. If you wasn't strong, you'd be out of here by now. Anybody been through what you've been through? And you can still smile. I'd say you're strong. Anybody who's been through what you've been through and you can still love? I'd say you're strong. Anybody who's been through what you've been through and you can still look over people's stuff and forgive and... I, I'm saying, I, I think you're strong. But, but, Cindy, it don't matter what I think about you. Joe, it doesn't matter what I pray for for you. It doesn't matter. You, you have to be strong. Finally. Why, finally. After every hurt, every snare, it's time now to be strong. Be strong. What other option do you have other than to be strong? You're going to be a quitter. You're going to be weak. You're going to be passive. What has that ever gotten you? You're going to be jealous. You're going to be envious. You're going to... You're going to be strong. I was talking to a friend yesterday, or the day before yesterday, her brother died. She said, any advice? I know you lost a brother. I said, be strong. What can you do? 
I can't go in the grave and say, come for me. All I can say is, be strong in the Lord. Pastor, but you don't know I was married 20 years and he just walked out on me. I don't know what that feels like, but I do know what it feels like to be strong. I'm a single mother. I'm raising these children by myself. You've never had to do that. You're right. But, but some things I've done, you've never had to do either. Stop highlighting your struggle like ain't nobody ever, ever made it through it. Everything you're struggling with, somebody is handling right now. You got to be strong. In the Lord. And then after that, you got to do it in the power of his might. And I'm going to tell you something right now. You got like, you got explosive power in you. You can do anything you want to do. You can do anything you put your mind to do. And just because you got older don't mean you got over it. You can't just keep drowning out and saying that was then and I'm grown now so I'm over it. Not unless you deal with it. You're around here talking about you finding everybody who knows you know you hurt me. You can't pretend forever. You can't keep coming in here with that fake smile on your face talking about I'm happy in the Lord and Jesus Christ is my strength. Shut your mouth and cry. Because I'm going to tell you something. You ain't got as long as you think. Your time is running out. And I'm not trying to be morbid and I'm not trying to say you're going to die. I'm just telling you that I'm saying that the opportunities will not be there forever. Your strength is fading. Every day. And you don't know it. And you don't know it until it's gone. You don't know it until it's gone. You're so busy trying to make it happen. You're so busy trying to be rich. You're so busy trying to open your business. You're so busy trying to be a, call, a ball. In the, you, you, you're trying to do all this kind of stuff and you don't recognize that you're taking care of business, but you're not taking care of yourself. When is the last time you ever had self-introspection and said, man, I messed up. I get angry about nothing. I'm fighting over about everything. I'm arguing everywhere I go, and, and I'm always trying to convince somebody that they're wrong. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, the person who's always trying to convince somebody that they're wrong is the one that's wrong. Yeah. Everybody's perspective can't be wrong. You're wrong sometime, too. Yeah. I don't care how smart you are. You don't know everything. <laughs> you got to be strong. You got to be strong. You got to be strong. You got to be strong, and you are standing next to some strong people, let me tell you. You got to be strong. What do you do when you've been married 40, 50 years, and the Lord calls your husband home? What do you do? I was thinking about Mother Richardson. I talked to her yesterday. She lost her son-in-law a year ago, lost her husband a year after that, and how many of y'all remember Pastor C. David Harrison, the one that stood here at the funeral, for those of y'all who were here, and he shouted out from the stage and said, uh, we're going to start Lighthouse Sugar Land. How many of y'all were here for that? Died of a heart attack this week. She said, what do you do? I said, be strong. Be strong. in the power of his might. This world is not our home. We are just strangers passing through. And ma'am, that's why you feel so lost, because you're trying to make yourself at home in a place that's not your home. Whatever you're going through right now, maintain your citizenship in heaven. You are a stranger in your situation. Don't you get comfortable there. Everybody shout, I'm a stranger. I don't belong in pain. I'm a stranger. I, I, don't, I don't belong depressed. I'm a stranger here. You only stay in it when you accept citizenship. I am a pilgrim. 
moving up the king's highway. I'm just a stranger. I don't want an address. This is the wilderness. When I see milk and honey, I'll stay. Do you know that when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, can I tell you something, and I'm going to let you go, that we speak of it as if it was one place, but the children of Israel were actually in five different wildernesses. Deuteronomy chapter 3 says that they kept going around the same mountain for 40 years. Five different wildernesses. They didn't know the difference because when you're in the wilderness, everything is the same. And do you know what happened? Moses was weak, struck the rock, canceled the reservations for a whole generation. And only those who were 21 and below with Joshua got in because they were not strong. They were chosen. They were a royal priesthood in the days of Abraham. It was the Abrahamic covenant. But you can miss your promised land even when you're chosen because you didn't have strength. I deserve to be happy, not when you're weak. I work hard, I deserve a new car, not when you're weak with money. I got married, I don't deserve to be lonely, not when you're weak and selfish. If you struggle with your strength lately, I just I, I feel I need to pray for you. In the resource, the recesses of my soul, I feel that I need to pray for you. If you've been struggling with your strength, I want you to come to this altar. Reach us to me. You are my strength. Strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me, you are my strength, you are my strength. strength.
grab your neighbor's hand. I want you to squeeze it. Because if you can squeeze their hand, it means you got strength left. <laughs> 